All right, hello guys. I'm happy to see you all here today. Thank you for coming to watch the next broadcast for the Seda College Online Intermediate class. Um, it has been a long time since I have said my name. I said it when our first video, but that was many videos ago, so I just thought I would say again for all the new new people here watching with us today. My name is Austin. Uh, yes, and I am from the United States. Uh, so just for those who are joining us today, it's a quick introduction of myself. Um, okay, well, we have a wonderful lesson planned for today. So, you know, go ahead and, and get situated, get comfortable in your bed, your chair, wherever you are. Um, feel free to say hello in the chat or in the SETA College Online uh, platform comments. Uh, maybe say where you are right now, what's the weather like, anything. Uh, we'd love to hear about where you are and what's going on. Okay, so as always, I'm going to begin with my lesson overview, say exactly what's going to happen in today's lesson and what all of the parts will be. So the grammar. We're going to talk a lot with modal verbs today. So if you were not able to watch my previous class, uh, please go watch the last broadcast because that also talked about modal verbs and we're carrying over. This is basically part two. That was part one. This is part two. Um, and the modal verbs for today are must, have to, and should. So we'll talk a lot about those. Um, the grammar is not complicated, but there's a lot to talk about the meaning for those three. So that's what we'll focus most on today. Next, we'll do a little bit of vocabulary at the end with phones and communication. Uh, it's kind of just a short summary of some good phone vocabulary. And then uh, I'll focus on some pronunciation parts with mustn't and have got to, and we'll come to that in time, so don't worry. All right, so beginning with must. So the meaning for must is, is a modal verb for obligation. So I'm going to say modal verb a lot today. And so if you remember from last class, modal verbs are special words that we use in English to express our feeling about the idea of the sentence. So do I believe that this sentence is an obligation? Do I believe it is advice? Do I believe that there is a strong intention to do it? Do I believe it is true? Um, all of those things are, are, are coming with uh, modal verbs, and that's kind of their purpose. So yesterday, or in the previous class, we talked about um, modal verbs of ability, and it was can and could and be able to. So now we're moving on from ability to obligation. So must is the modal verb for responsibility or obligation in the present. Uh, it is usually, or it is only a present tense word. It does not change. It cannot change for future, and it cannot change for past. It is only must. Sometimes you can express a future idea with this modal verb, uh, and I'll show an example of that in a moment. So the form, very simple. Subject, modal verb. If the sentence is negative, you put not here and then verb in the base form. So very little grammar to do. It is subject, modal verb, verb base form, just the parts one, two, three. Um, so here are some examples. Uh, for another, the first example is, I must write a letter to my grandmother. So there I think it's an obligation. I must do this. Uh, you know, maybe my grandmother sent me a birthday card, and I should say thank you and tell her how I am. Um, so there, I think it's a, it's a personal obligation. Um, or, you must come to the party next week. So here's that idea of a little bit of the future. So the obligation is present. You must come right now. Right now, I say you must come. Um, but the party is next week. So there is kind of the, the connection to the present, from, from present to future. Um, so that's what I mean by it can express a future idea if you're talking about this type of obligation, something that you think must happen uh, now or in the near future. 
Uh, and then we can make a question with it. So I talked a lot about questions as well in the previous class. Um, so please, as always, go watch previous episodes. Um, but we just swap the modal verb must and the subject to say, must I wear a tie with this shirt? Like, mm, I don't know. I don't think it. I don't think it goes very well. Must I wear a tie? Can I wear something different? Um, asking that question: uh, Do you think it's an obligation? Do I think it's an obligation? Okay, but that's everything for must. Um, it's really just pure straight obligation. That's what we're talking about. So let's compare that to have to. So it's the same idea. Have to is all about obligation. But the difference is this one can change form. This one can change for the future. This one can change for the past. And this one can change for the present. So as I said with must, there was no change. It is always just the modal verb here. No future, no past. Well, maybe a future idea, uh, but no, no form change, no structure change. Have to does. We do change all of the, all of the forms for this. So it will look like this, subject plus have to, and then the verb again in the base form. And here I, I use base form, like another teacher would say infinitive. So just, you know, the, the straight form. And so here's how we can change. So for the past simple, instead of have to, we have had to. Um, we can do a present perfect example. So instead of have to, it would be have had to. <laughs> Wonderful, right? Two halves right next to each other, have, had. Um, or we can do a present continuous, is having to. Um, or we can do even other, other types of verbs like infinitives and gerunds. So to have to or having to. Um, so all forms are possible here. And that's why we have it. So, you know, must is only for the present um, with maybe a future idea. But what do I want to do? How do I say an obligation really in the past or an obligation really in the future? Well, this is what have to is for to help express that. So here are some examples. Alex has to wear a suit for his new company job. So here we have has to wear, present simple, and it does change for like I have, he has. Same changes. Or Barbara had to go to the bank yesterday, so a past obligation, something she had to do yesterday. Or, we will have to buy a new vacuum soon. Um, you know, maybe our current one is, is starting to, to break or it's making some strange sounds and you say, I have to buy a new vacuum soon. So, uh, we can see here that we have present, past, and future forms for have to. But I, I, maybe I can hear you now, but if must is obligation and have to is obligation, how do I, how do I know the difference? Well, that's what I'm going to try to explain. So really, they are very similar. In the present or the future, you really can use either form, and it, and it doesn't matter. Um, so, you know, if I say Alex or sorry, you know, we will have to buy a new vacuum soon. I can also say we must buy a new vacuum soon. And there the sentences are totally equal. It doesn't matter. Um, but there are some situations where one is better than the other. So one, we have a, a grammar rule. So, you know, they are only the same in the present or future. Um, in a perfect or a past example, you know, had, have, or have had, or, you know, I had to do that yesterday, we must use have to um, because it's a, it's a past tense and must cannot be past tense. So there we have a, a grammar requirement. But in the present or future, they're the same. But So what is really the difference? So for this present and future where I can use one and I can use other, what's the difference? Well, it's very small. Um, generally, must is used for a personal obligation. Um, this is something where I think I should do it. So in my example for writing a letter to my grandmother, um, I must write a letter to my grandmother. There is no 
no rule, no law, no no other person who believes this. Only me. I think I should do it. So I use must. I must do this. Have to is for external obligations. So there we have, you know, laws from the government, uh, rules from your company, rules from your work, rules from your mother, <laughs> maybe in your house. Um, those are where we use have to. So here are two examples. I have to brush my teeth twice a day. Here, have to is more natural because this is a, an obligation from your dentist. You know, your dentist says, you know, you have to brush your teeth twice a day. Um, and so you say, okay, I have to do that. It's not me. I don't, well, I hope you want to, but, you know, it's not your desire. It's the dentist saying you, you have to do this. On the other hand, I must clean my bathroom today. So in this one, no one cares. Nobody in the world cares <laughs> if you clean your bathroom. Well, maybe your roommate does, but that's different. Um, it is a, it's a personal goal. You know, you say, this is something I must do today. But so this is really the only difference between the two in the present and the future. And to be totally honest, this is something that is different in different types of English. So American English, we, we don't use must. Um, in American English, we almost always use have to. Um, in American English, must is very formal, very old. Uh, however, in the United Kingdom, it is more common. In the United Kingdom, this difference is, is more popular. Um, so, you know, it, it just depends on, on how how you want to sound, what English you like. Do I want to sound more an American? Do I want to sound more British? It's your choice. Um, and so if you find this difficult, don't worry, it's not too big. You can really say one or the other and it, it won't matter. Okay, so then let's continue to should and shouldn't. So this is another modal verb. Um, and this one's very straightforward. We use should for advice suggestions, or opinions. It's, it's just kind of a weaker idea than must or have to. So must and have to are about obligation. This one's now obligation, one step down, to just advice and suggestions. And the form is very simple. Again, just subject, modal verb, and then verb in the base form, straight through, word, word, word. So here are some examples of this. The government should help homeless people. So there, that's, you know, whoever said this may, is me, sure is me. Um, this is my opinion, my suggestion for the government. I think that the government should help homeless people. It is not an obligation, but I think it's something good to do. Um, or you shouldn't drink coffee so much, or you shouldn't drink so much coffee, sorry. Um, there, that's my, uh, again, my advice. I think this is bad, so you shouldn't do it. Um, this should is almost all, it is always used in this kind of context for just advice, really. Um, however, there is another form that is very common in different parts of the world, and that's ought to. So if we look at the third example here, you ought to take warm clothes if you travel to Dublin. Um, good advice. <laughs> I recommend this. Um, but uh, here, should and ought to are totally equal. So, you know, you know, you don't worry about any idea of, of different meaning, different grammar. They're totally equal, just different words. Um, ought to is very common in, in my area of the United States. So I am from the south of the country. Um, uh, I am from the area of Florida. So, you know, everyone knows Florida. Everyone knows Orlando and Disney. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am from three hours north of Disney and Orlando, so the, the south region, the southern region of the country. And in that region, ought to is very common. And it, it is also common in other parts of the United Kingdom as well. Um, so it's just kind of a, um, a, a conversational thing. If you hear people say ought to, you ought to do that, then no, they, they are giving advice. It means should. Um, pronunciation is a little tricky because the spelling is strange. 
so I'll say it a few times for you to hear the pronunciation. So, ought, ought, ought to, ought to. And some people will make it negative. You can hear ought not to. Um, there's no contraction. Um, we, we don't make oughtn't, oughtn't. No. <laughs> we don't do that. It's just ought not to. Um, but you can say shouldn't and you can say should because they're totally equal if you if you have any problems. But maybe you like it. Maybe you like ought and you feel free to use it if you like it. All right. So the last thing that I didn't talk about is the difference between mustn't and don't have to. So mustn't and don't have to are not equal. So in the present and in the positive, must and have to are equal in, in most situations. However, when we make them negative, it is very different. And so this we need to focus on and be very careful with this. So if I look at meaning, mustn't is talking about something that is prohibited. Um, you can think something that is illegal, something that is against the rules, against the laws. Whereas don't have to just means it's not an obligation. You can do it. It is possible. You just do not have to. It's not an obligation. Um, and so we need to be very careful about that. So, and the form for mustn't, of course, it is a modal verb, so no change, always mustn't, just like must, never changing. However, don't have to does change. We have don't have to and doesn't have to for present simple, you know, um, I don't, he doesn't. And then we have past as well, didn't have to, so you didn't have to do that. Um, so just be aware this, this one will change for forms, because have to is the one that will change for time and forms. So, of course, the negative side will also change for time and form and, and such. Um, so just be aware of that. So Maybe I can help make it a little more clear um, with this, these two examples. So, you mustn't steal from the grocery store. This is a, a rule, a law from the government. You know, it is illegal to steal, so you mustn't do it. Whereas, you don't have to drive me to work today. My co-worker can drive me. Maybe you are speaking to uh, a friend um, who drives you to work uh, most days of the week. And you say, oh, 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 well, you don't have to do that today because my co-worker can drive me. And here the idea is your friend can still drive you. They have the, you know, they have the ability to drive you to work. It is the normal routine it's possible. Uh, it's just not an obligation today. So they, they still can do it if you want. Maybe your friend says, no, 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 it's okay. I want to. I want to drive you. Um, but you want to say they are not required to today. So that's really the difference here. Mustn't is for something prohibited against the law. You cannot do it, whereas don't have to. It's just it's not an obligation. It is still possible. You can do it. Um, but you don't have to in this moment. So we're going to do some practice to help make this a little more clear, um, but that's really the biggest difference here. And this is kind of the trickiest part of it because must and have to are, are very straightforward for obligation. Should and shouldn't are very straightforward for suggestions. It's really must and don't have to where you have to think a little bit about is it an obligation? Or is it not? Is it prohibited? Is it not? That's where we have to think more. So, as I said, that practice. So, in this practice, we're going to do it similar to how we did the last modal verb practice. So, I will show you a sentence. This sentence will have two choices. And you need to think what is the correct way or the correct modal verb in this sentence. I will show you all of the sentences, and then we will talk about all the answers. Um, as always, I'm going to show you the notes to help you remember. So must is for present obligation, a personal obligation. Have to is for an all obligation, but external, so not you, somebody else, a company, the government. 
Should is for advice and suggestion. And remember, don't have to is not equal to mustn't. They are not equal. All right. So our first sentence. You don't have to or you mustn't use your phone while you drive. Hmm. These sentences might be a little tricky. You really need to think about meaning in these sentences because the grammar may not help you. Because the grammar for both you don't have to and you mustn't use is the same, same grammar. So you really have to think of the difference here. Is it prohibited or is it just something that is an option? You do not have to do it. All right, next sentence. A police person has to or must wear a uniform at work. Ah, now we're going to the next. Is it personal or is it external? And that will help you decide, is this an obligation from the police person or is this an obligation from somebody else, a different group than the police person? Next, I must, I must to call, sorry, I, I did the, the coloring wrong there. I must call the internet company because my bill isn't right, or I have to call the internet company because my bill isn't right. So there we are, just, just my color is incorrect. So which is correct there, which do you think? I must call or I have to call? Again, you really have to think. Um, is these external or personal obligations? Okay. The next example. So you don't have to rush. We have a lot of time. Or you mustn't rush. We have a lot of time. Mm. Yeah. So in all of these examples, the grammar is totally correct for all. It's all about that meaning. What is the actual correct meaning here? Okay. Next example. Sarah must take more time off of work. She's working too hard. Or Sarah should take more time off of work. She's working too hard. Hmm. So here, is it an obligation or a suggestion? That's what you have to decide. Obligation, suggestion. Number six. Do you think we don't have to call now? It is late. Or do you think we shouldn't call now? It is late. Hmm. So I've made a question now for you. What would be correct in the question? Is this a... Uh, asking for someone's opinion or asking for someone on their obligation. And then number seven. The neighbor ought to clean their front yard. There's trash everywhere. <laughs> Maybe you have a very lazy neighbor. The neighbor should clean their front yard. There's trash everywhere. Again, yeah, what do we think? What do we remember about ought to and should? Do you remember? All right. So those are all seven sentences. You know, take a moment, think, make sure you have a, a, a guess for each one, and then we will talk about their, the correct one. Okay, so first, you mustn't use your phone while driving. Here, mustn't is correct. Why? Well, it is because this is prohibited. At least in all of the countries I know, it is illegal to use your phone while you drive a car. Maybe there's a country where this is not, <laughs> where this is not uh, illegal, and then we should, you shouldn't. But at least in Ireland, uh, it is illegal. You mustn't use your phone while driving. It is against the law. Okay, here's the next one. A police person has to, must, has to. A police person has to wear a uniform because now we've got an external obligation. This is a rule by the police department. So, you know, the police department says, here is your uniform, you should wear this. So, here a police person has to. In this example, though, that is the very kind of perfect answer. If you said must, that is okay. A police person must wear a uniform at work. That is really totally okay. A police person has to wear a uniform at work. Totally okay. Really, this, this difference is about, you know, what is the most natural way to say it. This is the, 
that if you do it, English speakers tend to do it this way and tend to use it that way. Um, but really, both are correct. All right, so the next one. I must call the internet company or I have to call the internet company. Hmm. Must. And maybe if you guess correctly, you know why, because this now was a personal obligation. I saw my bill and I said, hmm, I don't think that's correct. I must call them. Um, but it, it, uh, it's the same rule for number two. If you said I have to call the internet company, that's all right. Totally okay. Okay. Everyone will understand. Um, but in this example, must is the most, the most correct. They're both correct, but must is more correct. <laughs> okay. So number four now. You don't have to rush, we have a lot of time, or you mustn't rush, we have a lot of time. Well, here it's don't have to. Um, here, though, this one is a, a choice where mustn't is incorrect. Um, I say I don't have to rush just because, you know, my, my friend here, if they want to, they can rush and rush and rush, no problem. That They are, they are allowed to do it. It is totally okay. I'm just saying, you don't have to. We have a lot of time, so slow down. It's okay. Um, if you say mustn't, you are meaning that it is illegal. <laughs> the, the police will come if this person rushes, so that is not correct. We must say, don't have to here. Okay, number five. Sarah must take more time off, or Sarah should take more time off? Well, here, should is better. Should is correct because this is more of a suggestion. Um, I, I don't know many situations. I don't know any situations where you would say, you must take time off from work. <laughs> you must stop working. Um, I don't know if that happens. Maybe it does. Um, but to me, should is better for this situation because it's advice. It's a suggestion. Okay, the next, number six. Do you think we don't have to or shouldn't call now? It's late. This one is shouldn't, uh, because it is, a, you know, I'm asking for advice. Do you think we shouldn't call now? It is late. Maybe it's a bad idea. Um, whereas, do you think we don't have to call now means I am doing it. Sorry, sorry. I am doing it, but I, I don't have to. Do you think it is an obligation or not? Uh, it's not really the idea. It's, it's about that opinion. We shouldn't call now because it is late. What is your opinion or advice here? So we need shouldn't. Okay. And then number seven, the neighbor ought to or should clean their front yard. Well, here, if you remembered, they're both totally equal. So that's your choice. The neighbor ought to clean their front yard or the neighbor should clean their front yard. No problem, no difference. All right. I hope this makes uh, the difference is a little more clear for all of these when it's dealing with obligation and suggestion and advice. It can be a little tricky to, to, to tear apart these tiny differences. Okay, the last thing I want to make clear is some pronunciation. Some of you might be having trouble with mustn't, and that's because the spelling is very bad here. So really, this is incorrect writing, but it is pronounced this way mustn't, 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 no T, so just whoop, whoop, just remove it, mustn't, and your pronunciation is correct. <laughs> All right, the next is that in spoken English, have to very often is changed to have got to. The meaning is totally the same, honestly, exactly the same, and the grammar is the same, but when we say have got to, now we have more contractions because have kind of becomes an auxiliary verb. So we've got I've got to, she's got to, she's had to, and we have these contractions now because we've, we've added verb got, so we can make contractions with have. Yes, English speakers love contractions. We will find every way, <laughs> every opportunity to make a contraction. Um, and so this is just uh, another kind of uh, thing. This is something you may hear. It is very common when English speakers speak to say, have got to. 
um, when when we mean have to, and, and it's just, it's totally the same meaning. So here's some examples. You mustn't text while drive, just for pronunciation here. You mustn't text, but remember spelling always with the T, but pronunciation like this. You mustn't text while drive, driving. That should do it, yeah, while driving. And then the next. I've got to go soon, it's getting late. And so this is a very, very, very common sentence where we'll make that contraction. I've got to go, meaning I have to go, um, but we'll add got to make the contraction I've. We just, we love contractions, that's it, that's it, that's the answer, we love contractions. And then here is a, a present perfect example just to show. She's had to do this before, so don't worry, she has experience. Um, and so this is the present perfect. She has had to do this before. Um, so just to show, we'll make contractions that way as well. Even though there is no got, we'll take have to, go to the present perfect, and make she's had. So just so you know, that is another option as well. All right, but that's everything for the modal verbs. Finally, we're just going to talk about some phone vocabulary. All right. So I'm just going to show you some common verbs used with uh, phones and communication. So the first one is to hang up. That's just to end the phone call. You hung up. To call back. This is to return a phone call. So if someone ever says you should call back or I need to call back or you know call me back, that's what they're talking about. Just to you you did not answer the first time, so please return return my call and call me again in the future. Uh, this is a phrasal verb, so often we will put the person in the middle here. So, I need to call the company back. I need to call my mother back. I need to call my friend back. So, we'll, we'll split it because it's a phrasal verb. Next, to dial. This is just to put the number into the phone. This is the actual dialing here. Um, next, to text. Uh, this is just to send a message. Specifically, a text message <laughs> to text. Um, then we have the verb to message. This is more general. Um, this can be email, text, um, instant message, anything. Um, you can use it generally when you're talking about sending a written or typed message to someone. Um, and then finally, we have to leave a message. So this is a, a, a longer verb phrase. Um, really, it's a verb and a noun to leave and then leave a message, but we use it together as one very frequently. And this is to leave a voice message about your phone call when the person couldn't answer. So I don't know, you might not do this much anymore today. This is maybe from five or ten years ago where uh, voice messages were very, very common. I don't know. Uh, I don't have uh, voicemail much anymore. I still have it, but I do not receive many voice messages anymore. People text me instead more normally. Um, but it, it, this is what you might see. And you know, that was just back in the day when you called someone, they did not answer. You could record a message to say to them. That's what this is, leaving a message. Um, so just here are some examples to show. I've just hung up the phone. So past tense here is irregular. Hang up, hung up. So just be careful with that. You should remember to call your mother back. It's your, you know, she called for your birthday. You missed the call. You didn't answer, so you should call her back. And then maybe you'd say this: "Shh, he's dialing the number now. Stop, stop, stop. Shh, he's dialing." <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe it's a a a joke or some kind of of call. Um, and so we'll usually use this one in the present continuous because you're talking about that exact moment in time where you are typing the number. Oh, too many. There we are. Uh, David's, David just messaged or texted me. Those are really equal here. You could use either. He messaged me. He texted me. No difference. And then I've left a voicemail. I hope the company will call me back. So this is kind of um, an example of both together. Uh, you've left a voicemail, so call me back. All right. Last thing are some phone nouns. Those are verbs. I have three quick nouns to show you. So I've got a screensaver, silent or vibrate mode, and quiet zone. Um, so really, the first one here is screensaver. It, it's an older idea 
um, from computers in the past. I don't know, maybe, maybe many of you remember that we all had screensavers on our computer. And so this meant that if you did not touch the computer for 5, 10, 15 minutes, um, a, a kind of extra screen would appear. And it would just, you know, be shapes moving or, or pictures or bubbles, you know, just, just random things. Um, and then if you touched the computer, it would go away. That was a screensaver. Um, today, really, the screensaver on our phone is this the thing that displays when you turn it on and off. Um, that's kind of the, the today equivalent. And then we have silent and vibrate mode. Uh, this is just the, the mode that our phones are always on today. Um, silent meaning no sound, vibrate meaning the buzz, mur, mur, and then quiet zones being just no phones here, totally quiet. So just here are some examples. I've turned off my screensaver so my phone saves battery. Um, you, can, you can turn it off so that it, um, the phone just goes black and that will help. Um, and then this hospital is a quiet zone, so we have to put our phones on silent. And here we have a good example of have to because this is an obligation from the hospital. Quiet zone, so shh, phones on silent or vibrate. All right, so I'm just going to go back and we'll do uh, pronunciation for all of these. All right, so quickly, uh, repeat after me. To hang up. To hang up. To call back, to call back, to dial, to dial, to text, to text, to message, to message, to leave a message, to leave a message, a screensaver, a screensaver, silent mode. Silent mode, vibrate mode, vibrate mode, and quiet zone. Zone. Quiet zone. All right. Let's just get through. There we go. Okay. Well, that's everything for today. Like I said, we talked a lot about modal verbs. This is a very detailed lesson about modal verbs. So please, after the lesson, download the notes page so you can see everything um, and, and make some notes on it to say what's happening and, and what your thoughts are. So just a quick summary. Must is for personal obligation. Have to is for external obligation. But in most situations, both are okay. The difference is different verb tenses. Must will never change. It will always be present with maybe a future idea. Whereas have to can be past, present, or future. So this one will change. And then should is for suggestions or advice. Um, the, the grammar for should and must are totally the same. Um, subject, modal verb, verb in the base form. Whereas subject have to is a little different because we have all those different forms. Will have to, has had to, is having to, having to, to have to. We have different forms here. so. Um, this have will change. And so finally, just remember that mustn't is for something that's prohibited, whereas don't have to is it's not an obligation, but it's still possible. So just be careful with that. And then the last thing we talked about was some phone vocabulary, just to, to refresh your memory. Okay. Well, as I said, that's everything for today. So thank you so much for coming. Um, I hope this lesson was helpful and maybe you've learned something or remembered something you forgot. Um, as always, I'm in the chat now if you have any questions uh, or you want to, to uh, you know, say something that you didn't quite understand or didn't quite follow or just want to say hello. <laughs> I'm in the chat there to speak with you. Okay, well, I hope you will come back again for another intermediate lesson. And uh, so thank you so much for watching. Um, it was really fun today, so I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.